So the question is, can I have sexual relations with my spouse as I'm fasting? The quick answer is no. I don't recommend that. But the Bible outlines that we should not partake in pleasures as we are fasting. It's a time of afflicting your soul. It's a time of subjugating the flesh, okay? So Paul has an interesting take on this, and I want to address this. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5, Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time. So don't deprive your spouse of yourself except for a time. And this is only after you have told this person, hey, I'm going to be on a fast. Um, what do you think? I want to include you in my decision making concerning this fast. And I am praying that you can support me in this or even join me in this fast. Powerful, powerful covenant fasting is amazing, y'all. Anyway, so unless you have consent for a time, right, for a period of time that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer. So the only time you can actually, it's actually okay to say, you know, I'm not able to have relations. Um, this is a healthy marriage, you guys. This is a healthy marriage. I don't usually discuss dysfunctional. When I speak about marriage, I'm assuming that your marriage is between two healthy beings. You are whole, you are healed, and you are on a journey to become the best versions of yourself that God intended for you to become, okay? So two whole and healed human beings, you're able to communicate, hey, I'm anticipating a fast at the end of this month. I will not be able to participate in this particular activity for three days, okay? And it says, except that you, you give yourself to fasting and praying. So those are the two main reasons you would say, I'm not going to do this because I'm going to be fasting and praying for three days, okay? I'm going to be dedicating my time to God. The time I would use to engage X, Y, and Z with you, I'm going to be doing that, using that time to spend with God, to grow in intimacy with God by meditating on His Word, communing with Him, speaking to Him, praising Him, extolling Him, amen? feeding on his word and then it says and come together again right after your time of consecration of praying and fasting come together back with your spouse so that satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control so some people have low self-control and so this becomes a doorway for the enemy to entice the other person who is being deprived of you to go outside of marriage this is why it's so important to include your spouse when you're going to do prayer and fasting for a period of time. That is what Paul tells us. Verse 6 says, but I say this as a concession, not as a commandment. So he's saying this as granting something as a right, right? Like the person has a right to you because you are one flesh. Two became one. Two became one flesh. So it's, um, it's not a commandment. But it is a concession, meaning it's a right that that person is not deprived of their spouse, is not deprived of their husband, or is not deprived of their wife. Now, another scripture I want to highlight here that kind of touches on that is Isaiah 58, right? Isaiah 58 is the chapter for fasting. And in verse 1 through 5, it talks about the kind of fasting that God does not want, right? So verse 3 says this. They're saying this to God. Why have we fasted, they say, and have you not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your, of your fast, you find pleasure. So God is speaking through Isaiah and says, in fact, in the day of your fasting, you find pleasure. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about my personal approach to this. When I'm fasting, I try to make sure my husband understands. Um, like I bring it up. I'm going to be fasting these three days. And so he's aware of that. 
Now, let's say I forgot. And there's been times where I did forget to mention it to him. And so if we end up in the act, I won't say, uh, stop, blah, blah, blah. Because at that point, it's my fault. It's my failed communication. Like I failed to communicate, okay? And so I would just engage and then cancel that day for fasting. That day does not count for fasting. I have already participated in something pleasurable. I was not afflicting my soul at all, okay? And so what I do is I cancel that day of fasting and then I have the communication at some point with my spouse, hey, tomorrow I'm going to be fasting. So he's aware she's going to be fasting and this is not part of fasting, all right? So that is how I include um, or actually exclude sexual relations during a fast. So I would not recommend it. I would not recommend it because your mind is on something else. Yes. Okay. So this question I have not addressed at all. I have addressed it in the lives before, but not in a video. So I'm going to put this in the fasting folder so you guys understand. It is not a commandment, but God is very clear when he spoke through Isaiah and said, in fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure. You find pleasure. Now that pleasure is okay within the confinements of marriage. God intends for us to have that, right? He gave us a sex drive, right? But on the day of fasting, I recommend you abstain from that pleasure and focus on God and focus on praising thanksgiving, maintaining on the word of God, repentance, focus on Jesus Christ. And then once you're done with fasting, you can go back and um, not deprive your spouse of yourself, not um, leave your duty as a spouse. Amen. God bless you. I pray this blesses you. Hallelujah. Bye.